Well, welcome everyone and thank you all for attending today's webinar. We're gonna go ahead and get started. Uh, I'm Renika Lightborn and I'm really excited to have our special guest, Ms. Carol Ellis, Editor-in-Chief of SCI Magazine, uh, which is actually a leading publication specifically for self-directed investors. Uh, so Carol, again, thank you so much for being our, our guest speaker today. We're really happy to have you. And Carol's gonna talk about uh, some of the general principles that you can kind of look to apply and access when, when looking at different opportunities to be able to protect and grow your, your self-directed account as, we, as the economy reopens. Um, but before I turn it over to Carol, I do wanna kind of give you a, a high-level overview of what self-directing is, the different options available to you, and just the quick steps in terms of getting started with us. If you have questions, uh, just feel free to go ahead and type those in the question box. And we'll do our very best to answer uh, each of those questions throughout or definitely follow up with you thereafter. Again, my name is Renika Lightborn. I'm business development specialist. I've been with Advanta as an employee since uh, mid-2019. I'm also an active self-directed IRA investor. I'm actually also a client of investor um, prior to joining. So again, self-directing is something that I'm really passionate about. If you have questions or would like to schedule a consultation, uh, definitely feel free to give me a call or visit our website at advantaira.com. So just a quick disclaimer, at Advanta, we don't give any tax, legal, or investment advice. We also don't endorse any particular products. All of the information that we provide to you is more so for educational purposes. So as always, you're encouraged to, to do your, your own due diligence and definitely consult with your your professional teams before making any investment. Uh, just a little bit about Advanta and who we are. So we've been in the business for nearly 20 years as the one of the nation's leading premier self-directed uh, administrators. Uh, we do work with clients nationwide and um, be able to assist clients with investing in alternative assets using their retirement accounts. Uh, we do have well over a billion dollars in asset under our administration. And it, at Advanta, we do really take um, great pride in providing our clients that concierge style, that high quality service. Uh, for you as clients, that means you do have a, a dedicated account manager, a direct point of contact, someone who's there to you know, walk you through every step. Also too, at, at Advanta, our, our commitment to you is providing an educational platform uh, that includes hosting recurring webinars uh, like today's event that features guest speakers and experts. Also too, we do host um, local networking events uh, those have been uh, temporarily suspended due to the COVID-19 pandemic, um, but we absolutely look forward to um, the opportunity to resume those in the future as everything reopens. Our webinars are recorded, so you can always you know, feel free to check out our video library or visit our YouTube learning channel. Um, I would also encourage you to you know, take the time and check out our blog. It has great content about you know, all of the different trends um, and news relating to self-directing. So if today's the first time you've heard, you know, the term self-directing or, you know, it's relatively new to you, the main reason is because most of the common IRAs are, are held by the banks, the brokerage firms, and their business model we know is stock, bonds, mutual funds. Um, but believe it or not, self-directing has really been around for, for a long time, since the 70s. Uh, the IRS say that, hey, you can use those qualified retirement funds to really invest in a, a universal list of, of options. And we'll kind of highlight some of those um, pretty quickly. So exactly what is a self-directed IRA? A self-directed IRA is simply an IRA that gives you the control to invest in what you know and understand. You have the ability to you know, control the investment decisions. You have control over your retirement funds. You can look to use those IRA funds to invest in say, you know, real estate if that's your preferred strategy, whether it's you know, single family or multifamily or syndication projects, or if you're um, a, a paper investor, you can definitely look at tax lien investing or notes and mortgages, assignment, assignment contracts. Um, certainly you can use IRA funds to invest in precious metals or you know, private equities or you know, startup companies, oil and gas rights. I really, again, there's a long list of things that you can do with, with your retirement account. The only two investments you cannot purchase in your, your IRA is life insurance and collectibles. Uh, with collectibles, is anything like antique, art, wine, stamps, and coins. Um, some coins are, you know, allowed, but it's more so based on the actual um, trading value of that metal. 
again, everything else in terms of investment is on the table for you. So it really allows you to, to really diversify your account. So why do people choose to self-direct? You might choose to self-direct for any number or a combination of reasons. One, it can be a new source of capital for you. So if you have money that's say sitting in an old 401k, you can look to do a, a rollover of those funds uh, to make that investment. Or if you have an, an existing IRA, you can look to move as much or as little as you need to to make that investment where you don't have to say, you know, go out and take out a bank loan or, or tap into your personal savings. Another reason as to um, why someone may choose to self-direct is the ups and downs in the stock market, the roller coaster. So a lot of investors look to self-directing because they don't want to, you know, have to deal with the volatility in the market. They like um, the opportunity to, to really diversify their portfolio when it comes to self-directing. And then the third reason is the tax benefits, uh, which is why so many people choose to self-direct. Uh, the benefit of having those profits flow back into your IRA account, tax-free or tax-deferred, depending on the type of account that you have. So if you have a rental property that's in your IRA, the tenants will simply send the rental um, checks to advance it to be deposited into your, your account, no tax implications. If it's a fix and flip project, the, the property itself would actually be titled invested in the name of the IRA. And then the sale for um, the, the profits from that sale will flow back into your IRA. As it relates to the different type of IRAs that can be self-directed, um, really any type of IRA. If you have a traditional or a Roth, uh, if you're you know, self-employed, you can look to self-direct a, a SEP, simple or solo 401k, I'm sorry. So with the solo 401k, um, it definitely gives you, you know, a lot of uh, flexibility. Uh, we can actually, during a consultation um, call, just more so talk about that more in-depthly. Uh, you can look to uh, self-direct any former employer plan, like a 401k, 403b, or TSP type plan. Um, certainly any uh, former employer plan uh, can be, can be self-directed. Some lesser known accounts are the educational educational savings account and the health savings account that can, you can also self-direct. Uh, the main thing that you do want to remember here is, you know, the annual contribution between the different account uh, varies. And then with a Roth account, it being uh, tax-free, the distribution is tax-free at retirement. Uh, the only type of account that you cannot uh, self-direct is any current employer plan. Um, if you're under the age of 59 and a half and it's a current employer, uh, they would uh, restrict you from moving, most likely restrict you from moving that account. In terms of getting started with us, at Advanta, we've really streamlined that process for you in three simple steps. Uh, step one would actually be going through and opening up your account. Uh, you can do that electronically, fill out everything online. Uh, you will have a point of contact, you know, someone like myself who can walk you through the process, you know, discuss how it works, answer any questions that you may have, and then, of course, guide you through the application. Uh, and it, and the industry advanced, we're really known for you know being very responsive and of course our high quality of service. So we we do get your account open pretty quickly within that 24 to 48 business hour time frame. Uh, step two is actually you know funding the account. How are you going to fund it? Is it going to be by making a, an annual cash contribution, or if you have that you know former employer plan that you want to roll over, or if you have an existing IRA, you can move as much as little much as much or as little as you need to, to make that investment. Or you can you know, certainly use a combination of the different funding options available to you. And then finally, step three, you know, starting you know, investing. What, actual, what alternative asset you actually wanna invest in? Is it real estate related? Is it notes and mortgages? Is it you know, a private startup company? Or is it you know, oil and gas? The beauty is you get to decide exactly what is it that works for you and for your retirement account. Again, this was just more so a quick synopsis of you know, what self-directing is, how the process works, and then looking to get started. If you have any questions about anything I just mentioned, uh, feel free to type it in the question box. Um, I'm going to, before I hand it off to, to Carol, um, again, if you want to talk through your scenario, you have any questions, or you just want to learn more about it, uh, definitely feel free to reach out to me or visit our website, and we'll be happy to assist you. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Renika. Um, as Renika said, uh, my name is Carol Ellis. I am the editor-in-chief of Self-Directed Investor Magazine, which is the quarterly print and digital publication for Self-Directed Investor or SDI Society. 
and we serve one sole function, advocacy for self-directed investors. We are not custodians, we're not administrators, we're not financial advisors, none of that. But what we are is educated educators and advocates. And um, that lets me say with great pleasure that I love being able to work with Renika and with Advana because they really are experienced and knowledgeable and they also have a real understanding and empathy for real estate investors and self-directed investors. So that's a good person to have working on your account folks. And I can say that because like I said, I'm not any of those things. I am here only for you. So um, let's go ahead and get started on talking about how to protect your self-directed IRA and your self-directed retirement capital in the post-pandemic economy. So the coronavirus pandemic, COVID-19, and the American response to it has uh, changed everything. It has created the worst economic downturn in nearly 100 years. And regardless of where you draw your party lines, the effects of our self-imposed economic shutdowns, shelter in place mandates, at home orders, et cetera, they've been devastating on the national, state, and local economies. Um, more than 39 million people have filed for unemployment since mid-March of this year. The government, ha the government has uh, basically dived headfirst into the most massive stimulus spree in history. They have raised the national debt per citizen to uh, more than $77,000. And interesting distinction, the debt per taxpayer to more than $205,000, which basically means your newborn owes $77,000 on the national debt from the time they were born. Um, of course, they will assign that to someone else, probably you. Uh, and furthermore, Harvard researchers predict that more than 100,000 small businesses, and honestly, I think we all know there are gonna be plenty of large ones going down too, will have closed their doors, unable to adapt to what um, I like to call curbside economy because post-pandemic implies that we're done with this and we're not. Um, so unable to adapt to the curbside economy or they're located in states that simply would not permit them to even try to operate in um, what we're sort of calling the new normal. So why am I telling you all this scary stuff? Isn't this supposed to be you know, how to access the right opportunities for your self-directed retirement capital and leverage your capital and returns to maximum extent? Well, yes it is, but I am telling you these things to drive home how important it is that you identify opportunities for your capital that do not have any one or more than one of what we're gonna call the three fatal flaws that will undermine the stability and right now what may be even more important, the predictability of your self-directed investments. So over the next 30 minutes, we're gonna take a dive into those three fatal flaws. And I'll take this scary visual off the screen in just a second. Um, <laughs> in the post-pandemic investments that can make an investment look like an incredible opportunity, um, but actually basically be a total threat to every cent of your investment capital if you choose to invest it in that type of project or vehicle. So before we begin, let's agree on a few things just to make our time moving forward a little more productive and um, also to make sure that we're leaving from the same starting line, so to speak. First of all, let's agree that the reopening of state and national economies will create massive opportunities for self-directed investors. This is not to be heartless. This is not to sit around and talk about how we're gonna have opportunity at somebody else's expense. It's simply, let's agree, there are a lot of opportunities out there. Um, now, over the course of the next couple, next. 20 minutes or so, um, I will demonstrate it's actually not really necessary to wait for an economy to reopen. So if you are in located, a, if you're located in a city or a state that, um, you know, is close to Labor Day or after, um, you can stop holding your breath. But right now, I want to really focus on the fact we're facing a time of unprecedented opportunity for self-directed investors. So if you ever thought to yourself, man, I wish I bought X when prices were down, um, probably real estate, <laughs> then now is really your time. So let's establish that and go ahead and move on. Second, uh, let's agree that good opportunities are great for self-directed investors, but just because there are a lot of opportunities does not mean there are good opportunities. Um, for example, in 2012, if you had bought Facebook stock at um, about $38 a share, you would be enjoying about 600% growth. Uh, if you'd bought Barnes and Noble stock, which was trading down at the time at about $10 a share, you would have lost nearly half your capital at this point. 
Um, now, I know you're probably not only interested in investing in stocks or you wouldn't be here, but the point is just because it's an opportunity and even just because it's an opportunity to get something at a discount, that does not mean that it is a good opportunity. Um, and that's a really big issue right now because, <clears throat> excuse me, um, because there is so much stuff out there and a lot of it is coming directly for self-directed investors because you are the ones with the creativity, the flexibility and the capital to really resuscitate businesses, stabilize communities. Everybody is looking to you, but not every opportunity that they're looking to you for is gonna be a good one for you. And third, I think we can all agree that um, when we look at our debt clock, when we look at taxpayer obligations, when we look at the spiraling debt associated with every single American citizen, the government is not here to help. Um, you are on your own. If you don't want your retirement to be basically on ice and you want some sort of degree of control over your financial freedom and your financial future, you are on your own. It is up to you to make sure your investment capital is creating the returns and the yields that you need because this is simply too big. Whether, whether you feel like the government is trying to help or not, um, it cannot do it. So let's talk about how to take the reins and really take control of those investments in a way that will position you to really come out in the, you know, ahead at the end of this. So let's talk about our three fatal flaws that are associated with investments. Sorry, I just lost my screen. Okay, there we go. So let's talk about the three fatal flaws that are associated with investments that are available today. The good news for you is they're easy to spot. The bad news for everyone else is that they are easily camouflaged because the majority of the investing population has realized that number three in our agreement, you are on your own, is in full effect. And honestly, there are a lot of people out there desperate to get capital out there and they're not even really thinking about so much where it's going as looking for a place that looks like it might yield some returns. So fortunately, there's some really easy red flags that you can look for. Okay, so red flag or fatal flaw number one um, is if the success factor in the project that you're considering is flying solo. Basically, it has only one factor that um, is what hit, what what's the linchpin for making the project su successful. For example, um, there are a lot of multifamily development deals out there right now, and honestly, a lot of them are really good, and there are more than you would think given the restrictions on um, you know, business and all sorts of stuff. But um, a lot of those deals, if you actually read the PPM, you see that basically what the project manager is saying to you is in five years, this is definitely gonna be way worth way more than it is right now. <laughs> and then you look at what happens in those intervening five years and it turns out they're basically being financed by debt and by you. Um, there's not any real cash flow. They don't know what's going to happen if we have, you know, 10 to 30 percent vacancy vacancies. The assumption is just, well, by the time we get to this project, this is all going to be settled. So that's a solo success factor. If you don't get that appreciation so they can liquidate, you've kind of just funded somebody else, somebody else's hobby that's not working out. So um, probably so so one of my favorite people to interview. Um, his name is Sam Freshman. He works for Standard Management Capital in LA, and he's in real estate for 70 years. And he says that this is an issue, particularly at the very top and the very bottom of the multifamily ladder. Um, so if you say, um, what's the best type of multifamily, for, multifamily property to invest in? Um, he'll always say, go A minus, B plus, B, maybe C plus class projects, because those all have a little bit of wiggle room so that if things do get tough, you've got renters moving down the ladder that are still paying your rents. Or if things get great, you got renters moving up the ladder who are still paying your rents. Um, so that's a good example of a way to kind of look for things that are very tangible um, that keep you out of that sort of solo success factor, success factor. So that's red flag number one. Red flag number two is a corona susceptible location. And I think that we're all pretty familiar with the notion that location is everything, but COVID-19 and uh, our national response to it has created sort of a unique 
facet to the location factor. Um, because we have a federal government that makes our laws, but our states also have a massive amount of power and control over our lives by our governors and our state legislatures. So when the economy reopens, those state level forces can either support or wreak havoc on the support and growth of a project. And I tend to veer toward real estate because I know a lot of self-directed investors are very focused on real estate, but this is not only true for real estate, this is true for anything that is affected in any way by state governance. So um, any investment you make right now is going to be impacted by the state government where it is governed for good or bad. So that means that you need to make sure you're familiar, not just with the details of the investment, why it should work, why the project is a good idea, but whether or not the state is actively supporting or actively discouraging the things in this in whatever sector you're dealing with. Uh, for example, single family rentals are a classic asset for self-directed investors. If you buy at the right price, right area, you enjoy cash flow, you enjoy appreciation, you have a pretty darn secure income. Right now, the prices on these assets are extremely attractive. Um, however, say that you took that one step further and you decided to invest in vacation rentals in Michigan. Um, particularly in the southern part of the state, you could find yourself wholly unable to rent those properties out, not just because it's prohibited to rent them out, and that is changing as they try to phase it open again, but until recently, you couldn't even employ someone to open them if you weren't there it, in some cases, you couldn't even do it yourself because you weren't, you couldn't ask that that was not considered an essential service. And so the people who would go and dewinterize the cottages could not go and dewinterize them because it wasn't allowed under what Michigan had decided was necessary to, you know, deal with the coronavirus. So that isn't to say that Michigan is not a good place. It is just an example to say, depending on how you plan to invest, you want to make sure that your asset class is compatible with your state's track record in dealing with coronavirus because it is fairly commonly accepted that there's you know this is not the last spring we're ever going to see this um there are any number of people speculating it's going to happen again in the fall and you need to know you, you need to have as much of an idea of pos as possible about how the state government is going to react when that happens and finally your third red flag is um probably the easiest to spot, but it is frequently the hardest to resist for self-directed investors. Um, and it, this, unlike the first two, it's not necessarily an absolute black and white no-go, but it is something you need to keep an eye out for. Um, if you have inexperienced investment management, whether it's you or somebody else, um, you need to look out for it. And it's not just that you're looking for someone who has done a deal or two before. Because prior to the spring of this year, we were enjoying one of the longest running economic growth periods in our history. And it was a time when even relatively new investors could dive into various asset classes. And uh, even if they didn't wholly know what they were doing, they probably would come out okay. Now is not that time. You need advisors and you need investors and you need investment management from people who have serious experience, serious time spent in the asset class. You do not need to get, this is not the time for you to try to discover a unicorn in an area that maybe you or your project manager doesn't understand. For example, oil and gas prices took a pretty major hit. Um, as a result, there were a lot of relatively small, I would call them upstart investors trying to dive into this industry. They were trying to raise money to buy wells or buy land with oil and gas rights and various other schemes and concepts. None of that is illegal. None of those, you know, they're not bad people. But let me tell you, and I know because we at selfdirected.org and our sister company, KLT Group, have done some serious research into oil and gas type projects. You do not want a newbie guiding you in oil and gas. You want a seasoned investor with skin in the game. And more importantly, you want someone with an edge that veterans in the industry know how to get so you're not constantly losing your shirt on dry well after dry well. There are a million things newbies just don't know, like, if there's water in the oil, that can be wildly profitable or it can be horribly devastating depending on how they handle the situation when it arises. It's just not a game for newbies right now. Now, does that mean if you're a new self directed investor, you're out of luck? Absolutely not. What it does mean is you don't want to sink your capital into an asset class that you do not have a history with unless you are sinking it with someone who does have a history with it. And furthermore, a demonstrably successful history, 
not just in investing, but also in investing and pivoting when necessary to pull projects out of the fire. So those are our three fatal flaws. And that's our first lesson. Look for them. Don't fork over your capital until you've addressed them. Now that we talked about how to, how to identify the wrong opportunities, let's move into the second step, protecting and fund growing your self-directed investment capital in the reopening economy. So let's talk about accessing the right opportunities in today's market. As a self-directed investor, you have a lot of flexibility when it comes to investing, but you do not necessarily have the ability to accelerate the investment process, particularly if you are working with a slower IRA company, which is one reason, again, that I love Advanta because they are fast. Um, it is not illegal for an IRA company to take whatever predetermined amount of time they have put into their terms with you in order to help you facilitate a transaction. Um, however, you do want a company that is um, that has a track record of moving at the speed that you need. <laughs> um, you need someone who understands your timeline and, and is equipped to react to it in a timely fashion. So there are two types of acceleration that you need to consider in order to be successful in accessing the right opportunities in today's market, whether we're talking real estate, private notes, private equity, oil and gas, or even dairy cattle. So the first type of acceleration is not something that everyone should have access to, but we do have to talk about it because the odds are good you are thinking about real estate. That is the checkbook IRA and it is a game changer. Now, selfdirected.org is very fortunate because our legal counsel is actually one of the major players in the invention of this vehicle. So we like to ask him a lot of questions and uh, you can learn a lot more, read about, a lot about it on our website. But for now, let's take an overview. Um, if you have a checkbook IRA, first you need a self-directed IRA, and then you have some special structures lined up. So you can essentially write checks out of the IRA directly. And that is a massive oversimplification. So you need to talk to your financial advisor or your IRA professional prior to doing this. One of it's um, this kind of checkbook control is probably one of the best ways to, for example, buy real estate at auction using your self-directed IRA. But it rules out any oversight from anyone except the IRS, which is the thing you should be concerned about. So you have to make sure that you're really clear about what you understand in terms of what is and isn't allowed um with a checkbook ira and with a self-directed ira because just because you don't have oversight doesn't mean the irs is not watching so you do need a great custodian holding that account and you need to make sure you have the right structures in place to make the whole thing kosher so that's the first thing and we do have to mention it because it is absolutely a speed factor the second part though is accelerating high speed returns this is something that I really, really like talking about because we encounter it constantly at SDI Society. Our members are constantly saying, how do I get my returns bigger faster? Um, this can happen either because you're feeling confined by annual contribution limits. Uh, you wish you could contribute more than $5,500 or $6,000 per year, but you can't um, or you can't contribute that much. So you have a relatively small amount, maybe a couple hundred dollars in your self-directed IRA. Um, and basically the audience, uh, not the audience, sorry, our readership, our audience ends up saying, basically, we just waited too long, maybe it's too late. You know, are, how are we ever going to create the kind of returns we need so that we can, uh, so, you know, so that we can feel confident about our retirement. Um, so if you're feeling the need to start accelerating the accumulation of capital in your self-directed account, that's understandable, especially right now. These are uncertain times, and most of us would feel better with more capital deployed in reliable assets that would generate returns and help us sleep at night, as opposed to, for example, the stock market, which is sort of a constant roulette wheel. <laughs> Fortunately for you, this type of acceleration is not as impossible as it might feel if you look at your contribution limits or if you look at what you're actually putting in. Um, you have a lot of options. Um, they are, you really only need a fairly small amount of capital in that self-directed account to start generating returns. And remember, once you have those returns in there, well, you can turn right around and invest them again. Um, there's no rule that says you can only invest the amount that you can contribute. You can, you know, if you, if you generate 800% returns, well, that's wonderful. Now turn around and flip a house. Um, 
So SDI Magazine uh, actually recently published a report on this topic, and we talk about three really solid options for low capital, high activity investors who want to accelerate their returns. And um, I will be happy to send that to you, and we have updated it if you've already read it um, in light of the coronavirus pandemic. So never let what you perceive to be a dearth of capital snare you in a morass of investment inactivity, because even if you can't contribute by writing checks and, and putting funds in, you can contribute by investing wisely and well, like you're doing right now by listening today. Um, clearly, you're ready, ready to accelerate your returns because you're on this call, learning about your options, while the vast majority of your peers are mainly worrying about which political party they hate most. Harsh but true, so be proud of yourselves. It is part of why I'm so honored to be here right now. So finally, let's dive into the third and final angle of our call today, which is getting access to those opportunities. We've talked about the good, we've talked about the bad, we've talked about getting the good faster. Now let's talk about getting the right opportunities in the right locations that fit your bill for how you want to invest and that do not have the fatal flaws that can send the whole house of cards tumbling down. So this is easy and there are two steps here and the first is my favorite because it is very black and white. If you do not have a self-directed retirement account, please do set one up right now today. Talk to Renika. That is the only way you will be able to leverage your retirement capital effectively and profitably now during the, during the economic reopening and the massive opportunities that are coming with it. And of course, for the remainder of your life and your beneficiaries' lives because we haven't even gotten into the legacy side of self-directed investing and we don't have time to do so right now. So let's suffice it to say, if you value financial freedom for yourself and for your loved ones, then self-directed investing is the way to get it done, both in terms of your investment options and in terms of estate and legacy planning. So the first step is simple, set up that self-directed account. Now second, and this is second because there's absolutely no reason to wait to set up that account, if you wait, you might not have the acceleration option we discussed earlier. Second, but also today, please, actively engage in, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm sorry, actively engage in access, accessing the right opportunities. And that means signing up to learn about different types of assets. For example, our publisher at SDI Magazine, Brian Ellis, and I believe you will be hearing from him in the next month or two, routinely hosts some of the most compelling and transparent case studies in multiple asset classes. He picks them apart. He showcases where you could go right. He showcases where you could go wrong and pretty much diagrams everything you need to know in order to make good decisions about everything from oil and gas to multifamily real estate to single family investments and private loans. At the same time, you can and should easily be accessing a wealth of educational material on sdimagazine.com, including our monthly magazine featuring timely, relevant information, that every self-directed investor needs. And we are so fortunate that Renika also writes for us. So that's another way to hear from her. Um, you'll recall, I told you earlier, I'd be happy to send you the report on accelerating the growth of your available investment capital in your self-directed retirement account. And you can get that report actually by texting ADVANTA to 33444. And uh, when you do, I'll make sure you have access to the self-directed investor magazine and the news content on the site as well as those case studies uh, when Brian does them. And I'll also get the report to you. So of course, I am uh, happy to be here. I really appreciate you giving me the time and I will pass it back to Renika. And uh, that's all we've got. Uh, thank you, Carol. I really appreciate that. Um, let me, I did wanna ask you if you can kind of um, highlight, I know you mentioned in the article the, the three, um, the three options that you see investors are pivoting to, can you, can you give like a quick synopsis just for, for our listeners? Sure, the ones that we see that they're going into right now or the acceleration factors? Uh, the acceleration factors or both yes. of you. Um... Um, so previous, prior to, um, can you still see me? Or, or can you still hear me? I know you can't see me. Yes. Okay, <clears throat> so Prior, this this is what our report um, mainly went into prior to COVID, and we have adjusted it a little bit just in light of in light of how how some things have changed a little bit state to state, just to kind of deal with that. So that's in the new one. But basically, if you are dealing with a relatively limited amount of capital, um, a lot of 
real estate investors and self-directed investors um, fail to really realize that there are a lot of things you can do without, you know, without having to put down twenty thousand dollars to get the property and another thirty thousand, for example, to to rehab it. Um, you can wholesale in your IRA, and I will say that only if you talk to your IRA advisor, your tax advisor first, because if you flip and if you wholesale, technically those things can be done legally, but if you do them wrong, you can create a problem and you also may owe some taxes um, because you're doing something active in a self-directed account. So having just said that you can do it, I'm now going to say, but you cannot do it <laughs> unless you talk to somebody like Tim Berry, who's our SCI legal counselor, someone like that, that can tell you exactly what you're dealing with. But a lot of self-directed investors think that um, because you're going to owe taxes, it must not be okay. Um, it's okay to owe taxes on income that comes into your self-directed account as long as you owe it for a good reason. Like it's not, it's not a deal breaker. So that's kind of the biggest one because you can, as I'm sure you guys all know already, you can access a lot of good deals. You know, I mean, the whole thing about no money or little money down is very true, um, but you need to pay attention to how often you do it. And um, again, I really cannot stress enough you need to get some good advice about it before you do it. So that's the biggie because I think that's the most straightforward one. Um, but here, there's another one that a lot of self-directed investors have. Honestly, almost everybody's got it at this point and they don't realize it. And that is intellectual capital. Um, if you are on this call today, that means you've probably been on a go to webinar call before or a Zoom call before. You probably have a valuable contact list. And that means that you own a database. Um, you can use that database without being a spammer, without you know anything negative whatsoever. There are people who will pay for access to that database and you need to be responsible. Again, you need to review the laws regarding your specific industry, but the odds are very good that you have a social media reach or an email reach or even a physical mailing reach or some sort of other exposure that especially in today's post-pandemic economy, when everything is digital, there are companies out there that are desperate to reach people that they used to easily talk to in more traditional advertising that now they can't. So you should never overlook the value of your database or your intellectual property. Um, I call it, we call it intellectual property. I mean, that's not really what it is. It's just a, it's just a database, but sometimes that helps people think about it better. And um, the third one is um, a little bit more, a little, it's a, it's a little bit more, it's a little bit trickier because um, it does have a little bit more to do with intellectual property. There are ways if you don't have access to that type of database, but you wanted to lease one out, for example, then you could then become an email marketer through your self-directed account. These are not necessarily um, things that you want to do for the rest of your life, but they are ways to sort of accelerate those returns. And I should—I said three, I should have said four, because the last one, actually, I think Renika is probably the one you like the best. Um, there are a number of ways that you can make private loans um, using whatever capital you do have. And I'm um, actually one of, um, and I'm going to say her name wrong, one of my favorite private lenders, uh, Jasmine Willowa, talks about this. And um, I always thought you had to have a couple hundred thousand dollars to start making private loans um, using your self-directed account, but she actually has several self-directed investors who have started with much, much less. So again, partly because you are dealing with acceleration, and I promise I'll stop being this dead horse, but um, because you're dealing with acceleration, you may end up owing taxes. And so you really wanna be careful and you wanna to talk to your financial advisor, talk to your tax advisor. If you don't have one, go on uh, self-directed sdmmagazine.com and um, find Tim Barry, ask him, he's super nice. Um, but you really do wanna get professional advice before you just start going crazy with this. But um, those are ways that you can accelerate those returns a little bit. And um, I promise in the article, I walked through it much more methodically. Excellent. Thank you so much, Carol. Um, can you, uh, can you kind of um, highlight how they can access? I have a, a question in terms of how, how you can access the article. I know I have your contact information on the screen, but if you have. Um, yes. If you would 
uh, text Advanta to three three four four four, and that will get. Then I will send you directly uh, the updated version of that report. Excellent. And I know you mentioned about um, investors looking to possibly do wholesaling. Definitely uh, confer or talk with your tax professional. Yeah. The tax relate um, the tax um, that you were referencing is is known as unrelated um, business. You, I'm you, but I'm sorry, unrelated business income tax. So if you are, you know, considered to be doing a, a business transaction, obviously, again, it's based on the, the volume or the, the frequency and the activity. Uh, so you, but is the tax uh, that you would definitely want to confer with your, your, your tax advisor about. And can you repeat the text number one more time? I'm sorry, we have another. Sure. It's Advanta to 33444. Okay. Yes. So, um, do you have, do you have any, like, um, any other, like, you know, quick tips or trends that you notice in terms of in the next, you know, three months, six months, nine months, obviously no one can kind of predict what's going to happen, but do you see, um, investors more so leaning to, to more so, um, real estate related assets? Do you see them more so being, you know, investing in notes and mortgages, like you mentioned with, um, with Jasmine Willow, I'm actually going to be, a guest speaker for her group um, out in California later this year once everything reopens. But do you do you anticipate clients are, are going to lean towards? Um, what we are seeing, um, and it, it was actually the weekend that kind of everything started to shut down. Um, we were actually in Texas looking at a potential project, and um, you know at the time we really kind of. We had no idea what was going to happen. Um, and I have been really pleasantly surprised to see that not only are real estate investors who tend to be pretty level headed about things um, adapting quickly, but also the housing market at large is adapting quickly. I mean, one of the biggest concerns for retail buyers is, is truly becoming like, do I want to shelter in place in this place? Um, that is creating some very interesting opportunities for real estate investors, particularly in the multifamily sector, partly because um, affordability is going to continue to be a huge factor and multifamily housing is, generally speaking, a much more affordable option. Um, but also it's creating a really interesting situation where a lot of new multifamily development or um, existing but then extensively updated multifamily development is getting a lot of attention and support um, both in terms of being able with the developers being able to partner with um, you know public funding from the local government and things like that but also because what was previously trending um, smaller living spaces large community areas all those things not necessarily so appealing anymore so it's created this really unique situation where real estate investors who want to invest in multifamily have massive opportunity. However, um, that's partly why I really wanted to emphasize the issue of looking for someone who's got a real track record, not just I did, it, not even I did one deal last year and it went really well, but somebody who has been in this long enough that they can demonstrate to you that they have the ability to pivot a little bit because we are going into a very unpredictable time. And um, pre prior to now, the last 10 years were very predictable and the things were pretty positive. Um, so we're seeing a lot of people very interested in putting capital into multifamily. We're also seeing a lot of people very interested in getting capital for multifamily. And you just wanna make sure that if you're on the putting capital inside, whoever it is who's getting that capital from you is really well equipped in terms of having multiple strategies for making that project work. Oh, thank you. Let me see if I have any more questions in the question box. Um, I did have a, a comment, well, to see if you can kind of elaborate on it in terms of um, opportunity zones and self-directing. Have you, I know you've written articles about opportunity zones, but um, what are your thoughts on What are your thoughts on that? That is a perfect example of, of the state issue. Um, our 
Next um, cover story is an investor who has a massive opportunity zone in Florida. And uh, one reason that our, uh, our second quarter publication was delayed was because we did not know whether anything that we had said about him and sent to the printer was going to be accurate at the end of, um, you know, at, at the end of March or April. So we basically had to hold to find out how that project was going to turn out. And it was fascinating because we talked to them um, probably about a week and a half ago. That project steamed right on ahead the whole time. And it was partly good to good, it was partly due to good fortune because what they were trying to do was get everything permitted. Um, so that was something that they didn't really need a lot of physical bodies in one space, although it, it is a time consuming thing. Um, but the funding is there. And furthermore, his obligation to his investors is still there. If he fails, he still has let them down in terms of the capital gains they were expecting to save, the deferred taxes they were expecting to pay later, or if they left their money in there and they created a successful enough community, not at all. Um, so it's very exciting because in the states that managed to keep functioning at least to a degree, even if not in March, in April, um, projects really seem to be moving right along. Now that is much less the case in a state that is basically just batting down the hatches and is waiting to see what happens at the end of the summer. I would say that that's much less predictable. Um, but if, if you're in a state like Florida, Texas, um, I of course have a weakness for Georgia, but um, you know Georgia is very pro-business, pro, pro um, you know pro-investor in a lot of ways. Um, then you have a real you need to keep an eye on your opportunity zone, but there is no reason not to invest in them. Okay, thank you. I do have a general question about um, so what's the minimum account amount to to set up a self-directed account with Advanta? Um, actually, there's no minimum amount to open. Uh, you do have to pay a fifty dollars application fee, um, but actually we do have a a refer a referral program going on until it's been extended till July. Um, but there's no minimum amount that you have to fund your account. If there is a $50 opening opening account um, fee. So if you have questions or you want to, you know, talk about, you know, what are the different options or, you know, whether it's an IRA or, you know, a solo 401k, I definitely um, uh, feel free to to reach out to me. I'd be more than happy to to kind of go through that process for you. I'm trying to see if there's any more questions coming in. Um, Carol, I really... Um, you know, appreciate your time. You pretty much providing us with some some great nuggets today. Uh, feel free to you know let let everyone know how they can reach you. What's the best um, best way to, to get in contact with you? I do have your your information up on the screen, but if you have you know social media or just email, um, email is probably the best. Um, you are welcome to use the phone number. It'd probably be better to text me first, so I know you're calling. <laughs> <laughs> But I, I, I'm also on Facebook, just as uh, Carol Ellis, um, or you can go to our magazine page, which is on Facebook as Self-Directed Investor Magazine. Perfect. I'm going to see if there's any more questions that, that it's coming in. If not, looks like I covered everything. Again, thank you all for, for taking the time to partake in today's webinar. Carol, thank you for being our speaker. We really appreciate it. Thank appreciate you. you as always. I hope everyone, um, you know, stay well and stay healthy. And again, if you have questions about self-direction, uh, feel free to reach out to us at Advanto. Have a good one, everyone. Thanks, y'all.